Hey guys, so yesterday I did a live stream and worked on Swords Magic for a little bit and um, I had a couple questions on like the workflow on like how I go from models in Maya to Unreal Engine and I thought this would be a good video to kind of just get my feet wet in the whole like modeling stuff I've been trying to get into more. Uh, so this is gonna be like a quick and dirty like walkthrough on how I use Maya and UV and things like that and go into Unreal Engine. So um, yeah, so there's two main methods that I use um, in for Swords of Magic. I use one method and then for Arcane Toy Box, I'm using a different method and I'm going to show both those methods um, and I'll talk about the ups and downs, like the pros and cons of both of them. So for starters, let's just start with the first method, which is going to be material slots. So this is a method I use in Unreal Engine for, or for Swords of Magic. So let's switch over to Swords of Magic real quick. So in here I have this is my material library. There's other materials throughout the project, but this is like the majority of them. And how these works is how these work is these are all material instances. So each one of these is most of these anyway are inherited from a master material, which I can then modify certain things. So for example, let's open up this dark iron material. So you can see it's a little bit shiny, like a metal would be. It's very metallic. Um, but this has all these options in here, which inherit from the master simple material and I can modify these however I want. So the first step you want to make it or want to take if you want to use this approach is to create a master material and then exposed variables to these. That's a whole nother tutorial. Um, and then you can modify things like how shiny it is or how, how not shiny it is, etc. Um, and then you can go from there and make a whole bunch of materials from that one material. So cancel that. All right, so so basically what we do is when we bring a model in, let's actually go back to Maya and we'll just grab one of these models I just modified. Get out of the way. OK, um, the first thing I want to do is uh, if I want multiple materials on this model, I'm going to set those up with material slots now. So, for example, let's say I wanted the inside of this uh, tree, broken tree right here to be a different color. I don't, but I'm going to show you for the sake of the tutorial. Uh, I'm going to right click on this. It doesn't matter. You can do this. This is totally different in Blender than it would be in Maya. I'm going to select those materials, those, those slots. And I'm going to go to assign new material and I'm just going to choose uh, Lambert for now. It doesn't really matter. And then you can rename that material if you want to it or that it doesn't matter, like whatever you want to do there. Uh, as long as there's two material slots, oops, that. as long as there's two material slots, then this will work. So I can go over to that new Lambert material and you can see that I can modify the color there and it changes on that just that one spot. So I know I have two material slots. So one material is going to be the default color and the other one's going to be a new color. And now when I export this out, so I'll freeze transforms, delete history and export. Uh, we'll just stick it on the desktop for now and we'll call this SM uh, for static mesh. And we'll just call this uh, test tree for now because I'm going to have to redo that material slot. That's okay. And uh, we'll just export that and we'll go back into Unreal. And now we're going to go find, uh, I don't know, we'll put on the desktop here. Okay, so let's import uh, a new thing here. And we're going to go to our desktop and we're going to find our test tree. So in here, this is mostly default, except down here under materials. Uh, and this is up to you if you want to do this or not. Um, I do do not create new materials because I have my own materials I want to apply. And then I turn off import textures because I don't want any texture files imported either. If you leave this as create materials, it's going to create a bunch of white materials for you. And then you can rename them or change them, whatever. But unless you have a specific setup through Blender or through Maya that you want to use, I would just leave this to do not create. Uh, then I'm going to import. Wait a second. And now there's our tree. We can drag it in see so we have a tree in here. Cool, got a tree. Uh, so now to actually set up a material and actually texture it, um, which by the way, and you'll notice I did not do any UVs at all. I didn't change any UVs for this um, because this method doesn't really require UV modify modification at all or doing UVs um, because I'm using flat colors. But if you did want to do UVs, that's where we'd have problems. So I just double click that to open it in Unreal. And this is the like static mesh editor menu and I can see the material here and you can see this default material and you can even see how like stretched out it is and because that's because I didn't do any UVs on it. So we have two material slots. These are the two we applied in there. So one was the darker material and one was the lighter one. Uh, we're just going to pick one of these and we can just name it whatever we want. So we'll just do this one. We'll just call this one Oakwood. Um, 
as if, if you want to see which is which, you can click highlight here and it'll highlight the right material. So you can see that's the one inside there. And then this one we can do like pine wood. It doesn't really matter. That's just what we've called our materials. You can name your material instances, whatever you want. And now you can see I have two different material slots and that's how we texture almost everything in Swords Magic. So the downsides of this, um, the, the biggest problem, well, let's talk about the, the pros first. The pros are, um, this is super easy, right? I did that in like no time at all. Once you've got a model finished, you just go through and select the faces you want different, um, make a new material on them, and then you just drop it right into Unreal and you're ready to go. There's our, our model, it's finished. Uh, the downside is that now this one mesh that I've created, even though it's pretty low poly, it now requires two draw calls to render because it has two materials on it. So each of those materials needs to be drawn and not to mention each one has to be drawn for each light source. So let's say you have a, a moonlit scene with like a torch glowing or something. You've got a moon, you've got a torch. Um, that's two different light sources and it needs to render each one of those material slots for each one of the light sources. So now you're at four draw calls because you have those two material instances. So if you use the other method I'm going to talk about now, which is like a texture palette or a texture swatch method, that's not going to require near as many draw calls. It would just be one for the mesh per, per each um, light source because it's only going to use one material slot. And you can still have as many colors as you want on there um, depending on your texture palette. So let's switch over and I'll show you how I do that. Um, I'm not going to import this one into Unreal. Well, maybe I will. Yeah, sure. Why not? OK, so uh, oh, let's do one more trick real quick before I, before I move on. Um, so normally I wouldn't UV these, but there are there is a certain situation where I normally right, I could UV them and I might UV them. So first, let's just grab the whole thing and let's just do um, set this all back to Lambert one. So we just got rid of our both our material slots, mostly because in this situation, this is going to be like a charred tree that's in like a forest fire region of the game. And so it doesn't need the material slots. I don't need two different materials because it's all going to be like blackened. Um, so yeah, if you did want to do UVing or if you want to do any like fancy UVing, this is something I'd like to do. Um, so I'll start with doing like quick and dirty um, auto UV. So UV automatic in here. This looks terrible. That's OK. We can work with this or we can then go in and go UV planar. And now that's going to give us a better looking UV, but it is overlapping and it's not like cut and laid out nicely or anything like that. And if you wanted to like paint a texture on here, you'd have to go through the UVing process. And that's another video. Um, but my reason for this is because I like doing a like feathered material or like a gradient material on these. So now I've got this laid out, so it's up and down and I use gradient materials that start with like a certain color on the bottom and then it grade it fades to a different color on the top. So that's how I would normally set this up um, for certain uh, meshes. So we'll do this again. Yes, we'll overwrite that and go back into Unreal. And then we can just re-import this. Mm -hmm. We'll reset it and we lose that one material. But now we can open this up and we can use what uh, what's it called? Feather. It's in here somewhere, I think. Um, this blackwood material. And now that looks pretty charred and you can see how it feathers from or, fe or fades gray. Like, yeah, it fades from like a lighter color on the bottom to a dark color on the top. So that's because we did the UVs and the material is actually just a flat gradient from one color to another. So that's how I get away with certain things. Um, anyway, so now let's head back to Maya and let's do um, the other one here. Uh, actually, we'll use the same one. OK, so now let's say we wanted to do the two different colors, but we didn't want to use material slots because we want to be performant. Um, mindful. So also keep in mind, if you're doing like a top down like game where you only have certain amount of like objects on the screen at one time, um, those material slots, probably not a big deal if it matches your art style where you're doing like flat colors. Um, it's probably just fine. Uh, however, if you're doing like a big open world game like we are, material slots are actually going to cause you some major performance in the, the long run, and I would highly recommend against them. Uh, it's quick, it's dirty, it's super great for like game jams and stuff that's fast but it's not good for like long term major projects. So depending on what you want to do with your project and how far you it's going to be going, I would be careful with material slots. So this one is going to be the texture palette option. So we are going to we've already put in a material in here. Um, let's let's make a new material, though. 
we'll just do a new favorite. We'll just do another Lambert material. Doesn't really matter what type of material, material you'll use because you'll override this in the engine. Um, but in here, instead of the color option, and again, this is Maya specific, but you can definitely do this in Blender too, um, just in a different process. I'm gonna choose a file, and then I'm gonna choose that file on my desktop, which is um, palette example here that I've just thrown together for this. You can use any texture palettes you want or any image you want at all, and this will work. So now I have this texture palette in my UV editor here, and you can see, um, oops, uh, you can see exactly what this looks like. And if I hit the six key in Maya, then it shows how it's textured with that um, on there. So obviously this isn't what I, want, what I want it to look like. But what I can do is I can basically auto UV this again, and then I can scale it down to fit inside one of my texture swatches. And I, that's how I would UV like the whole thing to be green. And if I wanted that one spot to be lighter color, I can go in and auto UV that one spot. Let's do another auto UV on that. And then I can scale that down and move it over into this like lighter spot, for example. And now that's how I've done the, the same effect with a texture palette. The downside of this is basically you have to have a texture palette. Um, and you're going to want to use as few of these as possible. And you can have as big or small of one as you want. You can literally make them like pixel perfect, like a 128 by 128 texture palette, texture palette and have 128 colors by 128 colors if you want. Um, it's kind of tedious having to grab every piece and UV it to a different swatch on here. Um, that's a little, little bit tedious. And um, lastly, if you want to do special things like um, glowing effects or uh, a metallic texture or transparency or whatever, you're going to have to have like a whole new material setup in Maya for that. It's a lot more complicated than just the simple colors like I've been doing. Um, I also can just do a new material, master material for the material slots where I have like this one's glass, this one's going to be glowing, this one's going to be this one. And they're all very simple and they all have material instances like children set for each one of those that I can just slap onto different materials uh, or material slots. So yeah, this is pretty simple though. And then all you have to do is when you export it, so we will, oh, yeah, fine. we'll call this one palette. And then when we export it, we'll go back into Unreal and we'll import the new one in here. Uh, oops, not that one, this one. And then here's our test tree to open that. And here, this, this is where a situation might be useful to import textures because now it's just gonna import that palette for us. Um, and we could also create a new material if we wanted to. So let's just do that. So now we have a new material with that palette and there's the palette. We open that material up. You can see it's just a simple texture. Um, in, in here, you might want to go in and like add a scalar, whatever for roughness, if you wanted to like change that to maybe like be flat, like all, most of our stuff in Thor's Magic is, um, you could do that. And then when you drag your tree out, it is set up as you'd expect, quite easy. Uh, another nice thing is that if you name your materials um, correctly in game as the same as you do in Unreal Engine, or sorry, in uh, Maya. So if I named this material that we set up here as Lambert 4, but if I called it M underscore like palette or something, um, hit enter and it's named palette now when I export it, um, Unreal Engine will automatically try to find uh, any materials that would be called M underscore palette, for example, um, in the same folder it's in, and you can change the search options as well. And if it finds it, then it'll automatically apply that material to it. So you don't have to import materials every time and you can use the same material for every object in your world if your game permits that. Uh, and it, again, it won't hurt to have a, a handful of different uh, master materials using the palette, one for like metallic, one for glowing, things like that. It's a much faster and more performant way to set up um, your system. And then once, you're go once you get going, it's really easy because you don't have to worry about, like in this case, I had to open it up and switch all my different materials out. And in this case, it just automatically set it up for me. Right? Or if it doesn't, you just have to go in and set up that one material and it works and colors the whole thing for you. So there's definitely benefits to both, both sides, but those are the two methods I use for Arcane Toy Box and Swords and Magic. And um, there's a whole nother method for like texturing things like our clothing and stuff that I can do another video on if you want to know, because um, all of our characters do have uh, actual textured clothing and textured faces. And then most of the stuff in the world is all just um, solid colors. So. Anyway, that's it. Super quick, super easy, super dirty. If you guys want more uh, tutorials like this or just like you have questions about how I do certain things in Swords of Magic or just in general or how I use anything or oops, just bought my microphone. 
I do anything, if you have questions about how I do anything at all, um, let me know in the comments and I can make more videos. So uh, hopefully this was helpful, let me know.